Hi and welcome to another episode of Goodbye Matrix, where you will get international secret information what you don't get everywhere. <laughs> Today I have a special guest here, uh, Mikael Torup from the Expat Money Show. Mikael is a good friend of mine. We know us um, already quite some time and we mm -hmm. met first time in Costa Rica, right? Yeah, our families traveled together in Costa Rica, you know. Our kids got to play together and things like that, and now we're traveling through Colombia, so yeah. it's very nice. It was an amazing time. Now we're in Colombia, as you said, with Marco together, and we are a little group. So we started to record here some videos, and I have one topic, um, what I want to talk with Mikel today about. It's very interesting. Um, I wrote an article about how to get citizenship in Brazil, and in this video, we want to talk about how to get the citizenship by giving birth uh, for your child there. Um, that their child get the citizenship of Brazil and in the end also the parents over a longer period of time. Because there are three ways how to get citizenship in Brazil. First is you marry, uh, you marry a Brazilian citizen, that's the first way. And the second way is uh, you just settle down there, you have an investor um, permit, for example, permanent residency, you wait four years for naturalization. After that you can try to become also an, a right. Brazilian yep. citizen. The third option is to give uh, for your child birth there in this country. And um, after some period of time, you have to wait, you can also apply as parents. But you will also get directly a permanent residency, what is very nice. So you can stay there also as a parent with your child, because you are the legal guardian of your child. So that's very amazing. So we will not go really deeply in, into details about that, because I wrote everything in the article. I want to know from you, Mikael, why you decided to give your, uh, to, to born your child in Brazil, why you make this decision. And I mean, um, you have even uh, already uh, other plans for the future. <laughs> so maybe we can talk about that also. So you are really an international um, family. I mean, your wife's from China, right? Uh, you are from Canada. From China, but Canadian, Danish heritage. Yeah, so maybe met. better explain it yourself. <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm Canadian. Um, my wife is from mainland China. We met in Germany. Yeah. Uh, we got married in the Seychelles. Wow. Um, my daughter was born in Abu Dhabi, so in the Middle East. And my son was born in Brazil. We actually did birth tourism and we traveled down to Brazil to give birth. Now we live in Panama. We're, we're traveling with you this month through Colombia. Mm -hmm. And hopefully next year we'll be traveling through Ukraine and some other places together. Our families mm -hmm. are very close. But um, I actually started writing about birth tourism. Oof about five or six years ago with the publication of my first book called Expat Secrets, How to Pay Zero Taxes, Live Overseas, and Make Giant Piles of Money. And it was actually funny. When I gave birth and I let all my subscribers and things know, I actually had someone screenshot that uh, segment, that line or that chapter in the book and go, wow, Mikkel doesn't just talk about these things. He doesn't just write about them. He's actually doing them. Do, do it in Prexus, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Nice. Because I've heard of other people who, you know, have talked about birth tourism before, but, you know, they don't actually have any children themselves. So for me, this is, you know, maybe not so nice. I think it's better to get the information either directly yourself to do it or like you and actually meet someone and get firsthand experience. This exactly. is not just you know, I read about it or I heard about it or I saw some fo Facebook post or something like that. No, I mean, the content that you do is really amazing. You interview people who are experts and do specific things. So I think birth tourism is a very interesting topic and, I, and I'm happy to kind of discuss my personal experiences through it. Yes. No, um, I like what you said because, you know, usually the people, you know, we can write about everything. We can publish videos about everything. And in Germany, we say, you know, um, knowledge is power, right? But um, for me, it's not really true, you know, because knowledge is only powerful if you execute it and if you use it. Sure. So, and I think this is what we are doing as international people. We just really execute our strategies. We really go through it. We live it in practice. We learn it. We experience it. How, how does it work out and everything. And uh, from that knowledge and everything, this is what we want to give to you here on our YouTube channel and our articles and um, everything what we have, right? Um, that's the idea behind that. And I think that's so nice and that's why I'm so happy that you are here now to talk about this. So, I mean, Brazilian citizenship, I wrote a lot of articles about already citizenship by investment and uh, Brazilian, in, in the Brazilian case, it's not like it's not a citizenship by investment strategy, right? You invest some money or you contribute it to the state, then you get the citizenship. So here's another strategy that you make birth tourism, for example, like in your case, right? You uh, let your... Um, um, child born in, in Brazil and they get the citizenship after some time you can also apply for the citizenship as a parent um, I think with the Brazilian citizenship at the moment you can travel visa free to 170 countries so it's a very valuable passport it's uh, in the top 20 as far as I know yeah absolutely so Brazilian is a strong passport one of the things that we really liked is because we're a mis mixed race couple my wife is from China as we said and I'm Canadian Caucasian 
You know, if you walk down the streets in Brazil, nobody is giving you kind of a side words glance, you know, like a Chinese and a white person together, that is completely normal. Our children are half Asian, half white. Nobody looks twice at that. Now, we've lived overseas for over 20 years and we've been traveling and I can't say that is true in every country we've been to. You know, we have felt racism as weird as that sounds, you know, that's not usually something that you do. But in Brazil, there's nothing like that. They're very accepting. They're very welcoming as well. So it's we an made open a culture. Like very for open culture. Absolutely. So it's like in Malaysia, there's also like everybody lived together. And it's like the, um, the United States, you could say, out of uh, Southeast Asia. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that this was, you know, a plus in our books. We like to be kind of inconspicuous. Mm -hmm. We don't draw a lot of attention to ourselves in the street. Okay, yes, we're very well-to-do, we're very wealthy, but I mean, I'm not gonna be out there flaunting it. I don't need people looking at me or anything like that. So I think that these were some of the starter reasons for us. The other is, is the, the birth tourism itself. So what ends up happening is we entered the country about three months before we were about to give birth to our second child. We were working with a local team there. I always work with local representation. And we got our tax file number and we started getting all of these documents, proof of address, things like this. We went completely private for the hospital. Um, we did not rely on the we national health care. Public hospital? Just no, absolutely not. You know, I have platinum level coverage for my insurance. Mm -hmm. And I think actually, even with my insurance, I had to pay out of pocket because we were not covered for How maternity. How much you paid? $5,000 round? No, it was a, about a two thirds of that. I think we paid about three, three and a half thousand okay. US okay. dollars. Now, this was a private room. We had the, the, the suite, like the largest room in the hospital. It was a brand new hospital. Our doctor had been trained in the United States, spoke perfect English. All the machines were new. The nurses only spoke Portuguese, so that was a little bit challenging, especially at the beginning when I didn't really understand how to communicate. You know, I speak Spanish, but I would always ask people, you know, mm -hmm. do you speak Spanish? Do you speak English? The answer is always no. Actually, it turns out just speak to them in Spanish and they usually understand. And even if they respond to you in Portuguese, then you can kind of make out what's going on. You know, you might call me ignorant for these type of thing, but you know, when you've traveled to over a hundred countries, it's kind of difficult to learn the language of every single country no, that you go to. Not possible. <laughs> not possible. But um, I found the people to be amazing there. The staff at the hospital were fantastic. We had a great experience. We were there for about four days. Our child was born naturally, um, came very quick, no drugs, but they did have all of that thing, those things available if we did need. Um, very new facility, everything like that. So how is it about, um, when we're talking about already um, about the hospital and everything, which area, because I mean, I know that in Brazil, there's also a lot of crime, right? So it's depending yeah. where you go. So what would you recommend, Floria, Florianopolis or Sao Paulo? Or What, is, what would you um, say to people who want to do the same? Which area is good as a foreigner to bring your child um, yeah, to this planet safely? Okay, so I've traveled extensively through Brazil. This was my fifth time there. This was not my first time by any means. We decided to give birth in Florianopolis. Mm -hmm. We actually stayed at an Airbnb right at the edge of the CBD because we wanted to be close to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So we were about a four minute drive from the hospital. After the child was born, we moved out to the beach, you know, an hour, 45 minutes away or something like that. Um, there are little enclaves in Brazil of very safe areas, and I would certainly recommend Florianopolis for this. Mm -hmm. You know, we did some videos on my YouTube channel about purchasing real estate there, about the life, about the food, all these types of things. So you don't really think or feel like you're in a developing country by any means. You don't, you don't see poverty on every street corner. Actually, it kind of just feels like Canada, an the States. Community there, right? And there's a, a large expat community, but yeah. there's a lot of the well-to-do Brazilians that are there as well. So wealthy people living there. Exactly, exactly. A lot of people have summer homes there or vacation homes. People mm -hmm. come down from the, the capital or the larger cities down yeah. to Floripa to spend time. And yeah, I think it's a, a really nice place. We really enjoyed ourselves there. Okay. How was it uh, about when you entered Brazil? I I was always thinking of that, you know, when I'm at the customs and they see my wife, she's pregnant, she has a big belly, right? And it's, you cannot hide it anymore, right? So they know about this concept, right? Because it's written in the constitution that you can, if your child is born on Brazilian soil, like in the US or in other countries, right? Um, that you will get the citizenship or your child at least get the citizenship, right? Um, so I was always thinking maybe they prohibited me to enter, right? Because I see, oh, maybe I just come here for birth tourism. Did you experience any problems, any questions from the customs? And if yes, did you have any story what you make up or just like 
on proof, uh, onward travel proof, these things was uh, sufficient. Okay, so this is a great question. So I'm going to back up a little bit, so I'll explain things a, a, yeah. a little bit more. You know, first of all, we did not have a visa for my wife to enter Brazil. So we actually could not get it done in Panama because of COVID, because of these lockdowns. They have actually closed a lot of the embassies in Panama. So we flew over to Costa Rica to get her tourist visa to be able to enter Brazil. So we went there for, I don't know, three weeks or something like mm -hmm. that, sorted out her visa, then came back to Panama for a week or so and flew from Panama down to Brazil. Now, they, how to say, we didn't go in right before she was about to give birth. It's not like, oh, okay. we have a risk where she's going to give birth on the airplane or something like that. I'm an entrepreneur, I own my own business, my wife is a stay-at-home mother, so we didn't have this obligation of, okay, we need to get it done in just a really short period mm -hmm. of time. Because your so, income is also location independent. Correct, correct. So we actually went down to Brazil for six months. We went down for about three months before the baby was born. So certainly my wife was showing, but she wasn't around, like ready to pop or anything <laughs> like that. You know, and then I think if you wear a sweater and you're not flaunting it, if you're not, if she's not walking around holding her belly or things like that, you know, for the five minutes that it takes to go through the lineup yes. and immigration and speak to the guy then it's fine i mean you know don't make it obvious i, yes. I, I don't have really a better answer than that no. you know i think that yes if you did show up and it was like okay you're about to give birth in three days or something first of all you should, probably should not be on an aircraft anyways yes, exactly. you're not going to be i think some carrier they even don't not allow you to board uh, yeah exactly you know it could week. be 29 weeks or something like that and then past that you need to have a doctor's certificate to be able to travel pregnant you know we we went in with loads of time you know we really took our time we relaxed as i said we were close to the hospital there was no stress you know we didn't have any problems with the police with the federal police you know we had to actually extend our visa so we had gone there for three months which was our original amount to stay then we got an extension for another three months mm -hmm. so we spent six months there in total i think i actually spent 181 days there because i did not want to fall as a tax resident in brazil i wanted to come back to panama to make sure that that is my tax home and yeah it was it was so a good you experience just uh, scheduled some time into that and uh used also this time. So maybe this is like a thing what you can take out of this video. I mean, if you don't have a location independent income, at least have enough savings that you can so maybe stay a half year in this country or four months, right? That it's not so obvious for the customs or for somebody working at the immigration, right? That you maybe come to make birth tourism. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then <laughs> and the that other that you can thing... also plan everything ahead, that you can settle down, find a nice place. Because I think for a wife, it's also important that she can uh, give birth at a place where she feels well, right? I mean, it's of not course. only about just, I don't know, born the child now in Brazil, right? And let's move out again. You yeah. know, it's a, also she has to feel um, relaxed and safe and everything should be good, right? You have to take your time with your wife. You Absolutely. Have You're 100% treat right. Treat her good. And well, you know, we had originally planned we would spend about four months there, about three months before. And when the baby was about a month, maybe five, six weeks, we would come back to Panama. But what ended up happening is there's just massive delays at the moment with the federal police to get your residency done. So you might read online or you might see, you know, they say, oh, you automatically get your residency. It's not really the case. You still have to make an application for it. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is we gave birth in Brazil. We are now the legal guardians of a Brazilian citizen. And now we apply for the family reunification visa. And now as parents, as It takes you know, time, huh? Yeah, it takes time to go through. There's there's a there's lot a of lot documentation. Of right so much bureaucracy in Brazil. Yeah. You need to give yourself an extended amount of time. Even if it reads or you hear of other people doing it in, oh, a week, a month. No, it took us three months. I work in immigration for a living. <laughs> This is what I do. It still took us three months to get through. We actually didn't even get our appointment until April of the following year. So we're talking about an eight to ten month lead time to get our our appointment to actually get our permanent residency finalized. No, but Now, this is a big uh, difference between practice and theory, right? I correct. Mean, I, I can write the theory in my blog, and the theory is like, for example, it's written in the Constitution that you um, can get the citizenship once uh, you are on the immigration law, that uh, if you are guardian of a Brazilian uh, citizen, right, for, of a child, you are allowed to, to do it more fast track, let's say. After one year, you're allowed to apply. But in the end, you said to me, it's, you have to minimum calculate two years on the soil in Brazil, not only one year, right? Correct. Uh, until it's working out. And so that's like these little details you will only find out when you do it in practice. Correct. And in theory, everybody can write everything, but in the, in the practical thing, in the end, everything will look a little bit different. <laughs> well, I mean, I did research before and, and I had, 
you know, read other blog articles and things like this, and you keep seeing, oh, one year after you have your permanent residency, then you're going to become a citizen. Well, we got down there, and I can tell you for a fact that is not the case. I mean, but you can stay legally in the country, or you, have you to can leave? stay legally in the country. There's not a problem with that. But the actual path to citizenship for an adult no. is two years. I've spoken to the lawyers in person, sat down with them, immigration lawyers, gone through it, service providers, multiple service providers, mm -hmm. to see if there was different ways around it. It's two years. Now it is one year for siblings. So we have a five-year-old daughter. My five-year-old daughter can get citizenship in Brazil in the fast track of just one year of spending time on the ground there. Okay. But for us, for my wife and I, it is two years. Mm -hmm. So what we're planning to do is we will go back next April. We're going to be buying a new home there. Then, you know, we'll be traveling back and forth between Floripa and Panama City. We have some other homes around the world, so those as well. And then when we're ready, we will go down for two years. I will become a tax resident there. I will pay my taxes. I will contribute to the yeah, society. Thing we will learn, consider. correct. You will have to learn Portuguese. There's all these types of steps that you will have to you go through. You need to be uh, speaking, or be able to speak Portuguese uh, if you want to apply for naturalization. Yes, you do. Now it is a it is a test. There's a written aspect and a verbal aspect. I don't think that you need to be like massively fluent. I think that we can probably hack the the answers from you know <laughs> Pirate Bay or something like that. What the tests might be. I'm. I won't make too much comments about that. But yes, I think it is still your responsibility to learn the local language, at least enough to get by and show that you have a genuine interest in becoming a Brazilian citizen, which we do. If we did not, we would not have spent six months of our lives there and gave birth. And, you know, my son now travels on a Brazilian passport. So we are committed to this. So as you said already, and as far as I know, Brazil is like a, a place where there's a lot of red tape, right? And uh, government want a lot of papers from you and everything. So how was it to um, register your child in, while, when there's a birth and a birth certificate? Was it easy to register everything to get that? Or was no, it, it was also horrible. Hard? It was absolutely horrible. Okay. So there's, there's a couple of difficulties here. They follow the Hague Convention. So you actually have to get your documents apostilled. Now, I'm a Canadian citizen. Canada does not follow the Hague Convention, so there is no apostille. Mm -hmm. My wife is from mainland China. So it is also non... Yeah, so you have to do legalization, which basically means that you need to take your birth certificate, you need to send it back to your home country, your local government needs to legalize it, then it needs to be sent to the Brazilian embassy in your home country, they need to certify it, and then they need to send it back. Now, add to the fact that we got married in the Seychelles, that um, <laughs> you know we had to have our police records done in the UA and in Panama where we live and the Panama one is only 30 days valid and then the police department was closed for fingerprinting when we were trying to leave so we could only do a name check and there was just so much additional red tape which you know might not apply to you guys I'm not sure you know your family background or anything like that but as you do this more and more things become more and more complicated so it is something to consider yeah. No, it's crazy. Uh, you can hear already your international strategy behind that, right? I mean, you have UAE inside, you have uh, China because your wife's China, you're a um, Canadian citizen. It's uh, so many things, police record from Panama, so you have maybe there re your residency and everything. Yeah, you so end up doing multiple police checks, yeah. multiple, you know, the, the marriage check and then the certification and the legalization. And, you know, Panama's an apostille country, so that was okay for apostille, but not Canada, not China, not this, not that. Documents expire, and then by the time you get them ready, it's just... It's a lot of work, so it is something Horrible. to consider, and it is worthwhile working with a professional who really knows this. Exactly, stuff. it's always like that, right? Yeah. So, do you consider to also get um, Brazilian citizenship in future as parents? Yes, absolutely. So, as I was saying, we will spend two years there. I will become a tax resident so, there. Yes, that's what I want to ask you because you have to consider it like you have to become a tax resident, right? Correct. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this is also not nice in Brazil. It's not a tax haven and not a <laughs> haven for paperwork. Well, so, I've been tax free for the better part of 20 years. So, this is going to be a massive adjustment for me for sure. Now, you might think like, you might watch this video and think, oh, I can get a free Brazilian passport. Wow, well, that's amazing. Like that, right? It's not free. I mean, I'm high net worth individual. I do very well. I mean, I might end up paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax. It might actually be more advantageous for you to just go out there and make a donation in one of the five Caribbean countries or in Vanuatu or something like this, be done the whole process in three months, and you still have a great travel document. You're not spending a lot of money on tax. We want Brazilian because there's a lot of personal reasons, because we do love the country. We're going to have a home there. We want to live there. We want to have it as, an, as a base for our life. But it, these are different things that you have to weigh.
No, I was also talking about that in my webpage that there's a strategy you can combine even with Caribbean states, with Turkey, for example, at the moment, right? I mean, a lot of Germans, they don't like to hear Turkey. They would be like, oh, no, never Turkey, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I living already uh, so uh, long time outside uh, my home, um, like Germany, and I opened for so many cultures, so I don't see these things. So I see like where are the most benefits and what is the best strategy you can execute in the end, you know? So that's very important. And I love it to see it that you as a family, you know, you have so much strategy and now in future you told me that you even want to have another child but then in Mexico, right? Correct. So my daughter was born in the UAE. Unfortunately, we can't get citizenship with that. You know, we were, I was based there for eight years. My wife was there for six years and then she was three years in Doha. So she was nine years in the Middle East. I was eight years. Our daughter was born there. Our son is born in Brazil. Hopefully, inshallah, next year we will have another child. We really would like to have three kids and Mexico will be the next place. Yes, I understand how to give birth in Brazil and we could go and do this again and repeat it. We could give birth in Panama where we live right now very, very well, there's easily. There's also like that, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. You, Costa Rica also. So yeah, a lot there's of countries many countries throughout Latin America. But I mean, we already have our permanent residency there. We're already three years into our process for naturalization in Panama. So my child will already get that. So this is just an, this is a plus one. Now, Mexico also has a program where there is a fast track and a permanent residency if your child is Mexican. So I think that this is a great opportunity. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been to Mexico multiple times. We love the culture. We love the food. You know, I speak Spanish. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to improving my Spanish. And, you know, I want to be able to write about these things and talk about them intelligently through actually doing them you know i actually want to experience this myself yeah. so yeah i think mexico is going to be a very good option i don't have an answer to you know what is better brazil or mexico or some other country this is just the strategies that we're putting in place in our lives and so far we're really enjoying ourselves yeah. we we enjoy this type of lifestyle yeah. well, it's also a very um valuable point what you bring up here that you should always think of it you know how will it um, help uh, something what you do um, to grow your international strategy more, right? So I was talking to my wife uh, last days to Anastasia and they said, she said, yeah, I mean, why you don't buy just in Europe, uh, uh, I don't know, real estate, and for example, in Spain, right? In Barcelona or something like that. Yeah, it's nice, but I mean, what uh, additional benefit I get from that, right? Nothing, yeah. right? So um, if I would buy me here in Colombia, for example, uh, a house, uh, I think you get your, this investor permit, right? Correct. Yep. You get at least a permanent residency, uh, another one. So you have another point in your strategy, inter in your international strategy. So that's very important. And I love it that you even think of that, you know, maybe you do next uh, Mexico and then you will get also their permanent residency and you have like everywhere like, um, yeah, your bases and it's Correct. amazing, right? Yeah. And uh, also for your, for your child, so many, um, so your, your son, he has no Brazilian, Chinese and Canadian or? Well, so ch the Chinese, the way it works is he can get a special card. It, it looks like a passport, but it's not a passport. My daughter has it and it allows her to live in China, but she can't travel on it to other countries. Okay. So it's kind of like a long-term permanent residency visa because her mother or, you know, our kid's mother- So she will not a, get citizenship of China? No, because China follows a, a one, one passport type of system. Oh, like in Germany uh, and Austria, it's also very strict. Yeah, so we'll see what happens if they open up in the future. My instinct tells me they will not but we'll see. But we do have an opportunity to spend an extended amount of time there. I have a 10 year visa that's renewable because my wife is from China. So, you know, we go back and forth to China. Well, besides the pandemic, three, four times a year, we own a couple of properties there. We have a home there that, you know, with all of our stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very nice aspect because I think that what we're gonna see in the future with internationalization is not just having bases, you know, oh, Canada, the US, Mexico. Okay, well, that's all the same thing, you know? I would rather have bases, you know, all right, Brazil, uh, Europe, you know, old Ottoman Empire, China, Russia, you know, completely different jurisdictions because I see a lot of walls that are going up in the world and I want to have an option on the opposite side escape, of the wall. Right, where you can escape. Exactly. Yeah. So as you mentioned, you know, what does it really do you good to have another place in Spain. I mean, first of all, the taxes are absolutely atrocious there. And as a German citizen, you already have access to live and spend time there anyways. So that doesn't really help you. Now, if you had, you know, a visa to live in China or Russia or something like this, or Brazil as the topic of this conversation, I mean, that is 
a big advantage. So I think that I would challenge people to start looking, you know, not just different countries, but cultural regions and religious regions and these types of groups of countries, which I think is going to be really important as things progress in the world. Does that make no, sense? Yes, 100%. No, this whole topic, birth tourism, is very interesting, but most people, they're not really living it through. Um, the last question I want to ask you in this case is uh, because I heard it before always from people, especially from the, the girls or from the wives, from the men, right? they're afraid to do it. They're afraid because they don't know how to medical system in this new country when I arrived is it safe uh, I don't know this environment you know I have to go to a new clinic um, maybe a new doctor a mid new midwife all these things right and uh, I think a lot of women they are really afraid to do this step how was it with your wife and do you have any um, tips you can say to the people or give the people that um, you can help your wife to go through it you know and um to do it as a family together? I would say that, okay, so straight off the bat, I am very lucky. My wife is very adventurous. She okay. is, <laughs> we were already living an international life. She was already living an international life before I met her. So this wasn't something like, so oh. she was open for that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she'd already been living overseas for 10 mm -hmm. years before I met her. She speaks four languages. You know, she studied tourism in university. Mm -hmm. You know, she's lived overseas and traveled to, I think probably 30 countries before I even met her. So she already had this in her blood. I'm not talking about, you know, I married my childhood sweetheart and now I want to take her away and, you know, expose her to the world. No, I think having someone in your life that is already exposed to these types of things is a huge Make it bonus. Easy. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. So that's number one. Number two is think if I gave, if we gave birth in Canada, you might have that hospital room for 20 hours, mm -hmm. 24 hours. It would be a shared room, most likely. There'd be like four other, maybe six other mothers giving birth at the same time in the same room. So forget about getting any type of sleep. By giving birth here, not here, in Brazil, uh, today we're in Colombia, but by giving birth in Brazil, we were able to afford to have private service for everything. We had our own doctor. Our, you know, We messaged our doctor on WhatsApp. He came out to the parking lot as we were pulling in. The doctor helped carry our bags, took us right up to our private room. We had a first examination there, went straight to the birthing room, and like 20 minutes later, the baby was there. Like, the service was absolutely amazing. If we had have been there for 20 hours, The doctor had no other patients. He had no one else that he was going to need to take care of. He can of. really focus on you. Correct. Your wife. So we had hired a doctor for an entire day for as long as it took. Then afterwards, the, pre the post-treatment mm -hmm. to make sure that the baby is healthy, to bathe the baby, all of these types of things that the, my, my wife was healthy. We were there for four days mm -hmm. to go through all of these types of things. You know, we had a actually really nice chef who would come and visit us and the, or the the woman would come and visit us take our order i'd be like oh i'm a celiac i can't eat this food you know my wife wants this half an hour later we would get stuff and it wasn't like hospital food the stuff wasn't completely sanitized so you have to get out of your head that you're going to some third world country and things are going to be worse actually they're better, It's we're better for you. <laughs> it was way better we we're paying private for everything and i mean like we said it was maybe three and a half thousand dollars for the entire experience which is really nothing when you no, consider it i mean if you get hurt in the u.s or something and you need to take a 20 minute ambulance ride it's going to cost more than that so forget about it i mean my advice is try to change your perspective a little bit there is a lot of advantages to doing birth tourism you are giving your child a gift This passport is going to be theirs for the rest of their life. It's not just your children, but eventually your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. You're opening up so many doors. And once you're able to go beyond these walls that we were discussing before, I mean, that's now yours. That strategy is in place. You own that. You have that. Mm -hmm. And they can't take it away from you. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. I think it is worth the extra effort and the extra time and energy and all of this. I certainly find with my family it is. Thank you so much, Michael. It was amazing words in the end. And uh, I can really just uh, say it like you. It's like amazing. Thank you so much that you was today here and uh, give us an interview for this um, very interesting topic. I think most people, um, they heard about it. Well, most people, they even don't hear it, heard about it, right? That there's birth tourism. No. Uh, some of our blog, they know about it, right? And uh, yours, uh, especially the same. And um, it's an interesting option you can consider as a family if you plan to have a family, if you plan to have another child. Uh, think of it, maybe give it a birth uh, in another country and give your child another citizenship. Maybe you as a parent, a permanent residency in the end, maybe even uh, also a new passport, right? Or a new citizenship. 
that's amazing can be really give you so much more freedom for the future right thank you so much that you have been here today and all the more details about Mikel, if you want to find out more about him, I will place the link of his uh, Expert Money show under this video in the description below. Yeah, you were a guest on my show, one of our most popular episodes, so I hope really? that people go and check that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We had a great conversation. Yeah, we talked about amazing. the whole world and the Philippines and Georgia and all over Eastern Europe and discussed residencies and stuff. So that's definitely an episode mm -hmm. to go and look up at expatmoneyshow.com. Exactly. See you in the next one. Ciao. Thanks so much. <laughs>